you work in Erlang and Elixir, you will discover the concept of atoms. Uh, there are very fundamental data type in Erlang and Elixir, so we thought, I thought I should go over them a little bit. Now, if you're familiar with Ruby or Clojure or other Lisps or Prolog, you'll have seen similar things. Sometimes they're called symbol. Uh, other languages might be called symbols, but the same basic idea. An atom is a data type that basically has the value of itself. For example, the atom user ID has the value user ID, and it would be written either with single quotes or all lowercase in Erlang or with a colon in Elixir. Now, atoms are used all over the place in Erlang and Elixir. Module and function names are just atoms. So you could, in theory, in Erlang or Elixir, have a function name that is any legal atom, which include things like it could have a space in it. It's probably not a good idea, but it's legal. You can do it. Don't do that, but you can. All atoms are also used in data types. They're used in records. Uh, if you have a Manessia or Etz table, the first Usually it's a tuple with the first element being an atom, showing what type of data it is, um, and so on and so forth. So atoms are really useful. They're useful also for pattern matching and other things. And they're very fast and they're very efficient because they only take up basically one word of memory. The word place you have to be careful about atoms is this. They're not garbage collected, and there's a finite number that you can have in the system. It's about a million. So in the course of everyday events, you don't have to worry about it. If you, you know add a new module and it adds 20 atoms to your system and you upgrade your system, no big deal. He said, you can have about a million of these things. What you don't want to do, and it's actually a really dangerous thing to do, is use, is create atoms dynamically from user input. There's a function, string to atom, that will do that. And now that function has to exist because the compiler needs it, IEX and Elixir or the Erlang shell need it as would the uh, LFE shell, I guess. And there are other places like that where it's actually needed to do things like building code. But you don't want to use that with user input. Um, if you have you know, a web, a Phoenix or a cowboy web handler that takes user input and turns it into atoms, that's a good way for an attacker to crash your system. So again, don't do that. Um, what you can do is use the function string to existing atom. Now string to existing atom works like string to atom, except for if the atom doesn't already exist in the atom table, it will crash. So now you can't, it will not allow you to add any new atoms to your atom table. That's a really effective way to convert a string to an atom without risking blowing something up or blowing up your atom table and crashing your, your Erlang node. I hope that's a good introduction to atoms. If you liked this video, please uh, like and subscribe below. You can also turn on notifications, which will tell you when I put out a new video, and I'm doing that a couple times a week. And um, if you have questions, please drop them in the comments, and I have a link as well below to a online forum you can ask me with questions, ask me questions on.